Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my video lesson is on similar figures. Our objectives today are that you will name corresponding angles and corresponding sides of similar figures, you will identify similar figures, and you will find unknown measures of similar figures. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about as I proceed through the video lesson today. How can you use a proportion to determine if two figures are similar? Let's review some vocabulary. So here I have similar figures. These are figures that have the same shape, they're both triangles, and they are different sizes. So we can see we have a triangle here with sides 3, 2, 5, and 6, 4, 10, so different sizes. What makes them similar is that they have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. So similar figures, unlike congruent figures, do not have corresponding sides that are congruent. In similar figures, their corresponding sides are proportional. Here's what that looks like. So if I talk about corresponding sides first, I have side AB, which corresponds to side DE. Then I have the blue sides. Side BC corresponds to EF. There's my other ratio. And my third one is going to be side AC and side DF. So color-coded here are corresponding sides. And if they're similar, the ratio of their corresponding sides will be congruent. So we have this first ratio, AB is 3 to DE is 6, 3 to 6. Sides BC and EF are 5 to 10. That's our second ratio. And our third ratio is AC to DF, which is 4. All three of these fractions or ratios simplify to 1 half. So that makes them proportional. Now let's look at our corresponding angles. Angle A corresponds to angle D, and they are both right angles and congruent. So remember, this symbol right here means congruent when we don't know the number. So here we have angle B and angle E. They are corresponding and congruent. They are both 60 degrees. And then our third pair is angle C to F. They are congruent because they are both 30 degrees. So again, corresponding sides are proportional or have equivalent ratios when we compare corresponding sides. And then corresponding angles are congruent, and those make a similar figure. So here's our symbol for similarity. So it's just one little squiggly line. So congruent is an equal sign with that squiggly on top, or sideways S, and similar is no equal sign. Now let's talk about a distorted image versus a similar image. When you are enlarging an image on a computer, we want to do this without distorting it. So here is an image that I have, and this is distorted because I only dragged it by this little handle right here. So that would not be similar because I increased the width, but not the length or the height. Here's another one. Instead of increasing both sides by the same amount, I just pulled down on this handle right here and it made the image taller, but it didn't change the width. So this would not be similar to this original figure. Then let's look at what would be similar. Anytime you're on a computer and you drag by the corner of the image, that will create a picture or an image that is similar to the original and the figure won't be distorted. So typically when you're doing this in a project, you do that so that you don't distort your figure. But now you know that what you're actually doing is creating a similar image. Now it's your turn. I would like you to determine which two rectangles below are similar. Go ahead and pause the video now. Come back when you have your answer. Welcome back. So here's how we're going to start. We're going to start by understanding that since rectangles have four right angles, that all three of these, we were told that they are rectangles, that they all have four 90-degree angles, and therefore their corresponding angles are congruent. 
So now all we need to do is determine which two rectangles have corresponding sides that are proportional. So we're going to start by understanding that side A, it's side that's measured 5 in rectangle A, corresponds to the side 3 for B. So this measure side is 5, this measure is 3. And then A or B both correspond to the side in C that is with a measure of 9. So 5 to 3, or if you're comparing A and C, it's 5 to 9. And then the side 2 would correspond to the side 1 in B. B to C would be 1 to 3, or if we went A to C, it would be 2 to 3. So now we're going to look at those ratios. So let's start by comparing uh, rectangles A and B. So we're going to start with our first ratio, 5 to 3. And we want to know, is that equal to the ratio 2 to 1? When we do cross products, 5 times 1 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6. So therefore, those are not equivalent ratios, and A and B are not similar. Let's compare A and C now. So we have 5 to 9 and 2 to 3. So cross product, 5 times 3 is 15, 9 times 2 is 18, 15 is not equivalent to 18, therefore rectangles A and C are not similar figures. So we have one combination left, but let's check to make sure it checks. Let's compare rectangle B and rectangle C. So our first ratio is going to be 3 to 9, and we want to know is that equal to 1 to 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 9 is 9, it checks. So therefore, we know that rectangles B and C are similar figures. Now we can use the idea that we know that the two figures are similar to find a missing measurement. In the directions, we are told that these triangles are similar. Therefore, we know that their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. We have a missing side X. So we can write a proportion since we know that they're similar figures. So we're going to say that 6 corresponds to 18, x corresponds to 12, and there are our ratios. So our ratios would be 6 to 18. Writing our proportion is equal to the ratio x to 12. Now we're going to use cross product to solve. 18 times x is going to be equal to 6 times 12, which is 72. Now to solve for x, I'm going to undo multiply by 18 by dividing both sides by 18. So 18 divided by 18 is 1, giving me just x, and 72 divided by 18 is 4. So that means that this missing measure of side x is 4. It's your turn. You're told that the figures are similar and asked to find x. Please pause the video now and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's review the solution together. So we know that the figures are similar. So since we know that, we know that their corresponding sides are proportional. So we're going to understand that side 3 corresponds to side x, and side 12 corresponds to 28. And we're going to use that to write ratios that form a proportion. So side 3 to x is going to be equal to side 12 over 28. Now we're going to solve by cross product 12 times x is equal to 3 times 28. Multiply 3 times 28 and you get 84. To undo multiply by 12, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 12 to solve for x and 84 divided by 12 is 7. Therefore, x in this trapezoid is 7. Now it's your turn. Here's a real world problem for you. You insert an image on a document that is two and a half inches wide and four and a half inches tall. If you enlarge the image to be seven and a half inches by 10 inches, is the enlarged image similar to the original image? Go ahead and pause the video now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So I have my document here, which is this rectangle, and on it I have this Bitmoji image. 
we know that they've told us that this image is two and a half inches wide by four inches tall. And then I enlarge the image on my document, and now my width right here has become seven and a half inches, and the height of that image is now 10. And we want to know if those are similar figures. So we're going to do corresponding sides, forming a proportion. So we know that two and a half this width corresponds to the seven and a half. So we're going to do two and a half over seven and a half, and then the heights, four to ten. Now we're going to do cross products to see if they're equivalent. So 7.5 times four and 2.5 times ten. 7.5 times four is 30, and two and a half times ten is 25. Since they do not form a proportion, then we know that these figures are not similar and that we did not use the corner of our image to drag and enlarge it. So although this is an enlargement of the original figure, it is not a similar figure. So I thank you for joining me today as we learned about similar figures. I hope you'll come back soon and enjoy another video lesson here at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.